Matthew, great speech. Thanks so much. And our uh, final guest tonight is a presenter and an explosive talent whose seminal work, this is the second time I've said this word today, <coughs> oddly enough, uh, the vagina monologues is a study in social transformation. The first one was this morning when we were talking about C-section deliveries, um, saving hospitals money around the country. Meantime, uh, it's a study published in Social Transformation, published in 48 languages, performed in more than 130 countries, and of course experienced by millions on stage. It's an HBO film. The work started a global conversation on the value and the identity of women and girls, and its author pushed further, founding V-Day, a worldwide movement to end violence against women and girls, actually raised some $70 million for anti-violence groups. And her latest work, I Am an Emotional Creature, was recently published by Random House. It is now a New York Times bestseller as well. So please welcome with us tonight, playwright, performer, and activist, Eve Ensler. Thank you. I am so moved to be here tonight and honored. And I just want to take a moment to really recognize the extraordinary work of the National Council for Research on Women and how vital and crucial that work is right now. And I just, I just remember the very beginning days of the Council and I look at what it's become and it's, it's so hopeful and heartening and it makes me believe that the world is changing at the same time as it needs a lot more change. Um, I've been given the huge privilege and honor tonight to introduce a woman I admire and love a great deal. And I was thinking on my way here of, um, I was just um, today, uh, we've, I've been in a staff retreat the last few days and I kind of left the room of, of all the staff and we have women to here today from both Haiti and the Congo and I was talking about Milan with both of them before I came. and. And um, both of them said, please send her my love and thank her, thank her, thank her. And they said it in that way where you know that their lives have been changed by someone. I first met Milan um, Bevere when she was working as Secretary Clinton's chief of staff when she was the first lady. And I want to say that Milan is someone who is always welcoming, always listens, and doesn't matter who you are. She actually is open and inviting. Then and since that time, both as the co-founder of Vital Voices, which is an extraordinary group which has impacted women across the planet, uh, and as the U.S. Ambassador at Large for Global Women's Issues, she has been an extraordinary, just extraordinary champion of women across the planet. And I've seen Milan not only cherish women, but bring women forward, recognize women, find women, support women, um, serve women. Um, do everything in her capacity to change the scope and the world um, for women in terms about bringing equality, ending violence, um, injustice. I, I have to say that it's really exciting to see someone who's an activist inside, inside the administration. And I, I feel like she's bringing the energy of activism into everything she's doing as a global ambassador. But I want to share one story um, which I think exemplifies who she is. When we were launching our V-Day campaign um, and in the midst of it to stop the atrocities that are going on to the women in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and I have to say I think you, most of you know that what is happening in the DRC to women is without a doubt the worst violence on the planet today. Um, when I first went to the Congo and I witnessed what was happening there, I was shattered forever and I don't think I'll ever be the same. And when I went to Milan and I asked her if she would meet with me and an, a man who I think is probably the greatest living man that I know, a man named Dr. Denis Mugwege, who is working in a hospital in Bukavu, Democratic Republic of Congo, and serving women. Um, um, doing surgery on women um, literally 12 hours a day for the last 12 years, women whose bodies have been eviscerated and destroyed by militias fighting this economic war, Milan immediately said that she would meet with Dr. McGuege and I in Washington. And I brought Dr. McGuege to meet a lot of different people and often he says, well, that was interesting, but nothing will happen. <laughs> like we leave the meeting and we know, you know. But when we left the meeting with Milan, he, his heart was open and he had hope and he had joy and um, he was right.
because Milan heard Dr. McGuigge and he heard the stories and he heard all that we were bringing to her. And I have to say I hold her completely responsible for getting Secretary Clinton to make the first trip to the Democratic Republic of Congo, which was a huge, huge breakthrough. And I want you to know, Milan, that Dr. McGuigge asked me tonight to send you his love and to say that he keeps hope alive to a large degree because of you. Um, I just want to say that I feel that it's a privilege to know somebody who has fought this long, has fought with their heart. And, and when I say heart, I feel like Milan has this genius combination of heart and smart that's combined and, and that she's actually carried her heart into the administration and into a place of power, which is a rare thing indeed. And I feel we are all blessed, truly blessed, to have Milan as our ambassador for women at large. Please welcome the great Milan Vivier.